to ask him about his confidence and his preparation. Ken, I've been feeling really good. I, uh, I guess for the first time that I've been doing these world records, this will be number seven for me, that I finally inside realized that I'm going to have to take a few months' time preparation beforehand. And that's exactly what I did. I went up into the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. I uh, ran. I used the Virginia, uh, University of Virginia Tech's facilities. They were very uh, cooperative and let me in there. And uh, I feel really good. I feel real strong. My 130-foot dive was really good. When I have to admit, though, when I got up there and looked down and went, yeah, this is it again, you know. Last year I said I wasn't going to be up there, and then my phone rang off the hook for about two weeks until after, and, uh, after I decided that I was going to retire. And uh, every time I picked up the phone, I went, okay, you knuckleheads, I'm going to do it again one more time. And uh, I feel real good. I took the time, I have to say, though, I took the time to go out and prepare myself mentally and physically. And I think it's helping out a lot. Dana Kunsi, knees taped, ankles taped, several suits on. And he is no newcomer to this event. He's been world target diving champion, world high diving champion. Has more records than anyone else in the sport of di high diving. Dana, this is uh, Ken Sitzberger and Diana Nyan at poolside. Can you hear us? Yeah. How do you like your position, buddy? Well, I felt real strong on my first dive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the scores have been kind of low, so I'm hoping that I can get a good dive in there and up that scores a little bit. I need a win real bad. Dana, that's all I was going to ask you. You've seen the other dives, and everybody was fairly safe, but uh, nobody really put one in there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, golly, I'd like to put one in there. <laughs> all right, we'll wish you good luck, and go for it, buddy. All right, thanks a lot, Diane. He, uh, he's trying not to be too exuberant, but I know from uh, my experience with Dana over the last three or four or five, six years that he loves his position. He's the second to last diver. If he does a good dive, there's a good chance the last diver will scratch. He's a, uh, Pat Picard's a rookie, and uh, if Dana nails one, which he's very, very capable of doing, the, the, the competition will be over. And don't forget that these divers are not only athletic competitors, they're performers. They go all over the world, the Oktoberfests in Germany, etc., performing for the crowds. And they know how to salute, and they know how to give a smile, even when they're hurting, when oh, they yeah. hit bottom. His dive is uh, far more difficult than any dive that any dive that the other competitors have used. It's a reverse triple somersault. Baccia did a single somersault, and most of the other competitors did double somersaults. He's doing a reverse triple somersault back towards the platform. You can see him going through some of his arm movements. There he goes. Good jump. He's in good shape. He knows where it is. All right! He drilled it. No way that they're going to take it. see too much wrong with it. Maybe his arms went up a little bit on the finish right after the second somersault right here, but boy, did he get a good entry. Once again, 172 feet, solid jump, solid spin, solid interruption. Sees the water, comes out, and he knows where he is, and he drilled it. We can take a look at Dana Kunzi right now. Look at the tape on the knees. Absolutely in shreds, and that's all from, from the impact. That, that tape was tight, absolutely bandaged tight around his knees before he went. 